Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk is a very intriguing fight for many reasons, not least because there are so many variables. There is not just one path to victory for one fighter. This could go all manner of ways depending on how this plays out and there's so many things that could factor into it. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So buckle up, let's go. I guess one of the first things I've been thinking about in relation to this fight, which really hasn't been talked about too much, is Alexander Usyk as a southpaw. It's this whole sort of a different style for Joshua to deal with. The only real southpaw of any note on Joshua's record that he's faced is Charles Martin. And Martin and Usyk fight completely different. Charles Martin is often stuck in molasses with his feet and slow plodding. Joshua just eviscerated him in a couple of rounds. Alexander Usyk, a bit smaller than Charles Martin, fleet of foot, uses angles, you know, uses the ring movement, completely different style. And I guess the there are a couple of smaller heavyweights that Joshua has faced in the likes of Carlos Takam and also Alexander Povetkin, you know, 6162, that sort of thing. Usyk's slightly taller than those guys, but in terms of the movement and them being able to make themselves a smaller target, uh, sort of come in and out, try to get work away because they were the smaller men. They had to make the fight at different times. Obviously, that presented some different looks for Joshua compared to some taller timber that he'd uh, faced in other fights. But And Andy Ruiz too, but maybe he's a slightly different style and not as mobile as some of those other guys. But it is one of those things Joshua hasn't always looked good, especially early in fights against some of those guys having success, like Alexander Povetkin was able to touch up Joshua early, come in, get some work away, bust up his nose. Carlos Takam was making himself a smaller target, sort of staying at distance, you know, making himself small and able to evade Joshua at different spots. Ultimately, he wasn't able to do enough, get enough work away to really have any impact on that fight. And ultimately, he lost it. But Joshua, against the smaller man, and someone who's a southpaw that he hasn't really been fighting in recent years, hasn't had huge experience and, you know, any even back to the amateurs. So this is something a bit different. And it's not just any southpaw either. Alexander Usyk is a pound-for-pound pound talent. He is probably one of the best pure boxers, if not the best pure boxer, that uh, Anthony Joshua has faced and potentially will likely to face. So that is something I think that has been underplayed a little bit is the skill set of Alexander Usyk. And the fact that he is a southpaw is going to be something very different. But you can also make a case that the reverse is also true. Alexander Usyk has been fighting, for the most part in his pro career, guys that were there or thereabouts on the same height because he was at a lower weight class, at cruiserweight. Since he's come up to... Uh, since he's come up to heavyweight, he's only had the two fights. So we don't know what Joshua's height and his reach, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, what the impact of that is going to be on Alexander Usyk. Remembering Chaz Witherspoon was bigger than Usyk, but he's really not up to much. And even he was able to have some success against the likes of Alexander Usyk. You know, I mean, it was just a tune-up fight. Let's not read too much into it. But it's not like Usyk just went in there and completely blitzed him. And against Derek Chisora heavyweight who is slightly smaller than Usyk in height and reach you know it's hard to sort of compare that sort of fight with a Joshua fight because Chisora and Joshua fight so differently Chisora basically went in there to try and beat up Alexander Usyk and try to get him out of there ultimately he wasn't able to do that he was gassing and Usyk was able to take over and rack up rounds so Joshua six foot six you know, he's got a good jab, he's got a good reach, he's got the natural advantages, and that presents challenges for Usyk to overcome. And it's not that he hasn't faced taller guys throughout his extensive amateur career, 
But that is a different story with the amateurs being much shorter in terms of the distance of the fight. Even the World Series of Boxing, just the five rounds. And often Alexander Usyk was the seasoned amateur against some of these guys who were a bit more raw. So, I mean, often people like to talk about the Joe Joyce fight, but Joyce was as raw as anything. And I don't think you can really compare the way that even Joyce fought back then in 2013 with the way that Joshua fights now. Polar opposites. Um, and there's a couple of things for both these guys in recent years that you have to consider as well. They haven't been very active. And how much have they both really improved? One, since Usyk moved to heavyweight and he's been trying to acclimate to the weight, all that sort of stuff. What does that actually, what's he been doing to get himself ready for what is the fight of his life? And make no mistake, he spent basically his career and his life building to this moment to become... Um, a unified champion at heavyweight. He did the job at cruiserweight, hold a different kettle of fish at a higher weight where he doesn't have all the advantages. He's not a big power puncher. He's not necessarily the tallest guy, the fastest guy, but that doesn't really sort of seem to matter. He's, he probably is one of the most skillful guys at heavyweight. But there are still a number of unanswered questions about how he will go at heavyweight and we've seen in the past two years hasn't been very active part of that has been injury part of that has been promotional sort of issues he hasn't been as active as he would have liked to have been he's expressed some disappointment with the way that he's been managed in the relationship with Matt True, that he hasn't got some of the fights that he wanted at different points and it's likely because this is the last fight on his deal that regardless of what happens, that he's going to uh, leave Matchroom, potentially go elsewhere. But this video is not about that, but it does make you wonder, how far has he come in terms of his preparations as a heavyweight to prepare for the heavyweight champion of the world? And basically, he's fought Chaz Witherspoon and a much smaller heavyweight compared to Joshua in terms of height and reach, and Derek Chisora, who fights differently. So you've got those questions, but he has spent two years or a couple of years preparing for Joshua. So there'll be no stone unturned, but also for Joshua, he's been relatively inactive the past couple of years, just a couple of fights. Since he lost to Andy Ruiz Jr. in mid-2019, he had the rematch at the end of that year. And so what we saw was a different style, but you also have to consider that Joshua um, facing an out of shape Andy Ruiz Jr. being able to tweak th things there for a guy who effectively likes to be a counter punch and work off what you give him is very different to facing a guy like Alexander Usyk. You had Kubrat Pulev who was way past prime, still went nine rounds with Anthony Joshua. So there is a question about how much better has Anthony Joshua gotten since that loss to Andy Ruiz Jr in facing an out-of-shape Ruiz Jr. for the rematch and an older past-prime Kubrat Pulev, who, let's give Joshua credit, almost had him out of there in the third round and probably could have ended and should have ended, but ultimately it went on for another few rounds. And there were some factors with that as well because Joshua emptied his tank trying to get rid of Pulev in that third round when he had him hurt. He had to spend some rounds recovering. And one of the things that you have to ask about this um, fight is the whole gas tank issue, but we'll come to that. But with Usyk having been out and active, injured as well, you know, has his body held up to the rigors of being a heavyweight? But not only that, he's got quite a few miles on the clock. He had an extensive amateur career. I mean, is this a case with Alexander Usyk? Got a lot of wear and tear in the body here. Is this sort of past prime Usyk that we're looking at without knowing it because we've got to see this fight or has he got one great fight left in him and I sort of wonder with the weight you know because he's talked about coming in heavier he needs to be able to absorb punches all that sort of stuff I mean whether that's smoke and mirrors we will see but at the same time does that diminish some of what he's you know what is the best about him him being fleet of foot, mobile, being able to use the ring, use those speed advantages over opponents. And what impact will being a little bit heavier, and it doesn't have to be heaps heavier, but even if it's five or 10 pounds could make a world of difference. And we've seen with Joshua coming in lean, he is um, looking from all, you know, outside looking in, like he's going to box and move. But it won't be like the Ruiz fight because obviously Alexander Usyk 
is not just a Ruiz type fighter who's just going to be following Joshua around the ring that can't cut off the ring. Usyk won't let Joshua box circles around him. Usyk can cut off the ring. Usyk can use the ring, use angles. He can cut the distance between them pretty quickly. So the fact if Joshua is going to box and move, it's still going to look like a very different fight than the Ruiz fight. And in the exchanges, that's where the fight's going to, going to be won to some extent because you, you're going to see Alexander Usyk at times have to take some risks because the smaller man with the height and reach disadvantages, he's going to have to find angles. He's going to have to find a way to the inside, try to slip that jab, work in some shots, that straight left hand. But at the same time, that's a risk and it presents opportunities for Joshua as well. The uppercut could be a very good punch for Joshua to try to catch Alexander Usyk on the way in. But also the jab, trying to manage Usyk with the jab. He's got those height and reach advantages. Could be huge for him. And one of the things that is going to be vital with this fight, and for both guys, not just one. Sure, Joshua's um, been sort of criticized in the past for being big and bulky and having a, a gas tank that runs out pretty quickly. But um, he's going to have to manage those reserves, as is Usyk. I thought we saw in the Derek Chisora fight, and I've gone back and watched it, Usyk was definitely slowing down in that latter part of the fight. But Chisora was so gassed, he couldn't really take advantage. But Joshua has to try to manage his reserves. And I don't think we're going to see some sort of you know fight where Joshua just comes out, really tries to put it on Alexander Usyk. In his career, especially of late, he's started slow. He has been cautious. We saw that in a number of fights, and he hasn't got a stoppage before the first six rounds since 2016, since he stopped Eric Molina, and that was a mismatch. And also in that year, Charles Martin. But Martin was a static target that ate a couple of right hands and ultimately didn't want him. So this, for me, at least is going to go in the second half of the fight. Whether it ends in a stoppage for Joshua or a points win or even a stoppage for Usyk. And we have to consider that because this could be a case sort of similar to the Alexander Povetkin fight where you have Povetkin having success at different points, touching Joshua up, but then ultimately getting stopped. Could happen here uh, and Usyk gets stopped. Joshua catches up with him later in the fight, especially if he slows down. It could happen because Joshua's got power to hurt you when he hurts you. He's a good finisher. But Usyk does have a decent chin, but we're going to really see it tested in this fight. But also, he is going to be putting pressure on Joshua through his style. Mentally, it's going to be quite taxing for Joshua, especially if Usyk is not only just staying there round after round and hanging in there, but starting to run through the gears, which he can so often do. That sort of mental pressure and using the, the ring, the angles, sort of uh, coming in with uh, a lot of shots as he likes to do. Not all of them are big, not all of them are going to be hurting Joshua, but it is stuff that Joshua has to defend against and he has to be constantly on guard. Joshua likes to manage the range, he likes to manage the tempo on, uh, in a fight and Alexander Usyk is going to be trying to disrupt that all he can. And he could have some good success in this fight trying to do that. But I do see this as a fight that's going to ebb and flow. I think both these guys are going to start out cautious and Usyk typically is a slow starter. Joshua's going to want to have a good look, he'll want to keep things long to begin with and I think it's going to be a few rounds before this really sort of starts to ratchet into what it's going to be. And both guys are going to try to, you know, exert their themselves, their style. But it's going to be a real chess match. And like I say, for all the reasons we've talked about, lots of factors that sort of play into this. It's a great fight. And I can see all manner of outcomes for this fight. So who is going to be able to, to implement their style better, have the better tactics and and as I said, I can see this for as many reasons, turning out all sorts of different ways. Really like the fight. How about you? Let me know how's this going to go? What are going to be the key moments in it? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.